appreciate the one of music. God's people have something to sing about. Amen. God saved me and put a song in my heart. And I love to serenade my God. Amen. Back when I first saw my wife uh, 52 years ago, I decided right then that I wanted to romance her. I took my guitar down to her house and I'd sit in the living room and I'd sing songs to her. Because I had fallen in love. I'm sure it started out as puppy love, but it sure was real with this puppy. <laughs> but as the years has gone by, it just continues to grow. I don't see how I can love her any more than I do now, but it has proven to be that way over the years. It is impossible to biblically know the Lord Jesus Christ and not be head over heels in passion in love. That's right. He has shown himself lovely, attractive to they who God has given a new spirit, a new heart. And I just enjoy loving Jesus Christ. Amen. I wish I could say that I love him the way that I should love him. That's something I have to continually work on. Right. One day I will indeed love him with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. There is enough love in my heart for the Lord now that I want to obey him. Mm -hmm. I want to live under his lordship authority and do exactly what he tells me to do. I fail in that continually. Praise God, I have hope in Jesus Christ that one day I will be like him in his presence. And it's just mind-blowing to me, but the day will come when I will never, ever sin again. I'll never sin again. And that's my hope, and I praise God for it. I want to invite you to turn with me in your Bible this evening to the Apostle Paul's letter to the saints at Rome. If you would, Romans chapter number one. And I'm going to share some thoughts with you here for just a little while here this evening. Romans chapter number one. I love the book of Romans. Amen. I believe all of God's people who are acquainted with the scriptures have a special place in your heart for the Romans epistle. And I'm so grateful for what little bit I know there's so much yet there that uh, I have not yet reached that level. But I want to. I want to know everything that there is to know from God's Word, about God's Word, from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21. One of the outstanding books, if we can say that about any book in the scriptures, to me is the Romans epistle. Uh, the Apostle Paul has so much to say about the gospel. He gets right to the point in the very first chapter and the first few verses. He begins with the gospel and it just builds from that point all the way through the Romans epistle. And I strongly believe that any uh, young man or elderly man, whoever it may be, that God may call you to take this journey of the ministry, to be called into the ministry of the preaching of the gospel of the grace of God, I would encourage the people of God, those people, to become as familiar as you can with the Romans epistle. Because it is so filled up with the major fundamental right. doctrines of the scriptures. Right. And Paul has much to tell us about this Romans epistle. There's never been a man of such revelations as the Apostle Paul. 
And God revealed the truth to him. He showed to him, first of all, the truth about himself. That Paul was in desperate need of the Lordship of Jesus Christ acting in his life. He, God showed him so much about himself that he was on the wrong path. That he was religious, but he was lost. And he was in desperate need of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul calls himself the chief sinner. And he understood that if there was ever a man deserving of hell, it was him. That's the way he felt about himself. He did not boast in himself. He was not a perfect man. But he was headed in that direction. And he was certainly, he had certainly surrendered himself to God and to the Lordship of Christ. It is impossible to be a true Christian if you have not yet been conquered by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because the first thing that we do as genuine believers is to step down off of our throne right. and turn all throne rights over to Jesus Christ. Amen. He becomes our Lord as well as our Savior. I cannot tell you how many times in recent days that I have been condemned by men who are supposed to know one young man recently attended the church. And he said, I preached that Lordship salvation. And he said, I just don't believe that's the way it is. But Jesus Christ is not a smorgasbord. No, right. And we pick over no. and look at and smell of and, and examine and think, well, I like this, but I don't like that. Right. I'll take this, but I can't handle that. Right. You either receive the whole Christ right. or you go to hell when you die. Right. That's the way it is. To as many as receive Him, to right. them gave him Amen. power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on him. Amen. I don't see anything wrong with Jesus Christ. Amen. I like everything I see about him. Amen. Sometimes it's rough on the flesh. But I try to be rough on the flesh as well. My own flesh. Because I hate my sins more than I do anybody else. In the Romans epistle, in verse number one, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. I told you he just gets right to the point. <laughs> separated unto the gospel of God. And then here is a parenthetical statement in regard to the gospel of God. He said, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. He said there's nothing new about this. When we speak of the gospel of God, this is not something that God just quickly threw together. Right there, when it looked like Jesus was just going down to you. But we understand that what was happening to Jesus, that God was controlling every event, everything that was going on. But as they came to arrest our Lord in the Garden of Gethsemane that night, they were not in control. Our Lord Himself was in control yes. of the situation. They didn't have to hunt Him down. They didn't bring bloodhounds with them and flashlights and, and uh, everything under the sun to try to find Him thinking that maybe He would run and hide and be in the bushes somewhere. They brought with them weapons and lanterns and torches. But they were shocked when he just came walking out to meet them there head on, face to face. And when they heard it, they told him who they were looking for. He said, you found him. He said, I am he. And they didn't have to search for him. He came out because this is his hour had come. Yes. And it was time now for him to do what must be done in order to redeem his people 
You see, the Father had sent him into the world on a rescue mission. Jesus Christ had come here, having been commissioned with the mission from the Holy Father. He came into this world, born of a virgin. That's a fundamental truth. If you don't believe it, you can't go to heaven when you die. Amen. He was not born in sin. He was not born uh, contrary to the will of God, but according to the will of God. The Father sent him here, and he was not born a sinner. And I believe that. Amen. The biologically impossible. But like, why did it happen? How the world ever said, How can this be? And the angel said, Simply by the word of God. Simply put, he said, Because God said it. And that's what accomplishes things. You know why Peter was able to walk on the water? Because Jesus said, Come. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's all it takes. The word of God. Why would we want to change to something else at this point of human history and try to find something else to bring sinners to himself, whether it be theatrics, entertainment, whatever it might be, something a little bit more simple and a little bit more palatable to the taste? Why would we change? Or as the saying goes, why fix it if it's not broken? Amen. 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 Yes. I still believe that it pleased God through the foolishness of preaching yes. to save them that believe. I do believe that it's not the preacher himself that brings sinners to him, to Christ. We can bring them to the altar, and I'm not against coming to the altar, and I'm not against an altar call <clears throat> unless it gets so filled up with the flesh Amen. that it honors man instead of honoring God. Amen. And it becomes nothing but man-centered rather than Christ-centered. I don't have anything against anybody being passionate about sinners being saved. I just believe we ought to do it God's way. Amen. And right. Continue to preach the Bible, the blessed Word of God, and God by His Word quickens sinners. He makes them alive, and He summons them. He draws them. He moves upon them in mighty power. And he causes them to understand their desperate need of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God never has saved any sinner against their will. God gets a will. As the word of God is true. As truth is revealed to them. The only way we can know anything is for God to reveal that to us. And he does it by power. Salvation is still a supernatural work of God. He is of the Lord. And we could no more get out of our sin and the terrible condition that we were bound in as lost people than Jonah could get out of the belly of that great fish without God divinely intervening. He said, salvation is of the Lord. If I get out of this well's belly, he said, God, you're going to have to get me out of it. And that's still the way it is when it comes to sinners being saved. And I'd rather have the real McCoy than phony baloney. Amen. Amen. I want them to be real. I want them to know the Lord. Jesus Christ was born of a virgin and he lived without sin in this world. He never did commit a single sinful act. He never had a sinful thought. He never spoke a sinful word. He's the impeccable one, holy, 
harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. He, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The perfect one. You see, I had to have perfect righteousness. Yes, sir. And you had to have perfect yes. righteousness. Yes. A perfect God won't settle for anything less than perfection. Right. It's got to be pure. Yes. It's got to be without flaw. Without sin. It must be completely pure and perfect. God won't have anything less than that. Right. Amen. And I could not produce that. I couldn't manufacture that. Every day, I don't have any problems finding something or someone to be critical of. All I got to do is look in the mirror. All I got to do is think about where I've been and what I've done throughout the day. And just take inventory and examine myself. And I see a man who daily needs the grace of God and, it's, and I daily praise God for His abundant mercies and compassions that are new every morning and that don't ever fail Amen. and that there is one at the right hand of God who still represents me and not only am I saved because His righteousness has been imputed to me but I continue to be saved because Christ continues to intercede for me yes. and to represent me as my great high priest. Yes. Thank God the Lord Jesus Christ is my salvation. He is my hope. Yes. He is the only one that I look to to get me to glory. All hail the power of yes. Jesus' name. Little angels and saints alike Prostrate Amen. fall. Amen. Bring glory and honor and praise. Amen. He is crowned. Lord of all. Amen. 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 This is my Savior. He lived without sin. He went to that garden of Gethsemane after giving his disciples final instructions before he is to leave me. He is to leave them. And went into Gethsemane where he knew that they would find him. They wouldn't have any problem knowing that he was there. He frequented that place. He was often there. It seemed to be maybe a special place of prayer for him. Judas knew where he'd be. Judas had been around him for about three years or so. And he knew what his custom was and his manners was and how where Jesus might be this particular time of the day or night. And so he knew he, he wouldn't have any problem leading that bloodthirsty mob into Calvary or into Gethsemane where Jesus would be waiting for them. And so they showed up. And they arrested him. And he did not revile and reject and refuse. I don't know. They may have bowed his hand, but they didn't have to. He would have brought, brought along with them. This is why he came. Hmm. This is what it's all about. He was the man, Christ Jesus. Yes, sir. As well as God, Christ Jesus. Amen. He had two natures. A divine nature and a human nature. He did not have a sin nature. He was not attracted to sin. He cared not for sin. He hated sin. When it was time to eat, the disciples said, Lord, you're not eating. He said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. And I've come to finish his work. Yeah, that's right. And he's 
called upon me to do. Lord Jesus was happy and glad and rejoiced in doing the will of the Holy Father. And he was where he was in Gethsemane that night at that appointed time because there is where the Father wanted him to be. And the man, Jesus Christ, as a human being, he, he didn't look forward to what was coming to that body of his. Listen, when he suffered, he literally suffered. He was in severe pain. You ever heard anybody talk about having a, an excruciating headache, excruciating pain? And that word excruciating comes to us from uh, the cross work of our Savior. It means out from the cross. These are the words that are used in the Greek language. Out from the cross. Excruciating. The Lord Jesus Christ, as far as his body, he wasn't looking forward to that. He endured the cross. He endured it. Despising the shame. Blood. Listen, God help us as the people of God, the church of the living God, and us men of God. May the Lord help us that this never becomes so common right. and familiar to us that we lose our joy yeah. of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. and what he accomplished yes. and what it took for him to yes. accomplish. Yes. 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 What it cost God to redeem, to rescue, to reconcile us to himself. Make it peace for us how? Through the blood of his cross. The blood of his cross. These are not elementary things we're talking about. These are not things that are, have become oh hum. No. If we are walking with God, I believe we ought to stand in the shadow of the cross every day. Yeah, we ought to make a trip back to our blessed Redeemer in Gethsemane. Where his sweat becomes as great drops of blood. When he says, I am so sorrowful, even unto death. And when he was beginning to bear the great weight of all that God had intended to come upon him and everything that he is going through. Lord Jesus Christ. Doing what the Father had called him to do. Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. But not my will. Thy will be done. As Frank McGuire used to say, even if it killed me. Mm -hmm. Which is exactly what it did do. Even if it kills me. Is that the attitude that you and I have as servants of our great God? Mm -hmm. I will be done even if it kills me. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ did. You understand the reason you are sitting here today at peace with God is because God turned his pockets inside out. When he gave the very best that heaven had to offer his only begotten son. I'm grateful for everything that's in heaven waiting for me. Yeah. Everything that God has prepared for me. I'm grateful that I have a hope, that I have a mother to have. And I have a hope that I have a dad there. And I have a hope that I have two grandchildren there. I'm grateful for the hope that I have of 
family members that are there. But I can honestly say this evening, you know, brother, my greatest hope will be to look upon the face of that one yes. who poured out his life. The Bible said he laid his life down for his sheep. Isaiah said it's by his stripes that I am healed. There is nothing greater about the coming of the Lord than the Lord who is coming. Jesus himself Wherever he is, the flowers bloom, and the atmosphere is perfect, and the scent is sweet and lovely. Wherever he is, the lambs can lie down there at the feet of the good shepherd and find rest and find peace. There's green pastures. There is still water. Picked me a bus out. They looked good. And I got on that 
us. And I mean, I was a big boy. I was a school boy. I remember getting up on that bus and walking all the way to the back, sitting on the back seat. And then, in a little while, the buses started going. We got in a line. We come down to the stop sign. And one of them went that way. The other two went that way. And then along the line, those two split up. And so, after we rode for a long time and everybody on the bus got off of me, <laughs> I knew I must have got on the wrong bus. And I'm sitting in the back and the bus driver looked up in his mirror. He said, son, come up here and sit with me. And I got up and I went up there where he was. He said, sit right there on the front. See, I sat down and he said, where do you live? And I told him. He said, uh, I live in a little community called Louise. And Louise was named after an old uh, sheriff robber daughter back in the day. And I told him, he said, he said yeah, I said, I know what that is. And uh, he said, just sit right there, you'll be all right. We rode and rode. Finally, we rode up into a churchyard. And uh, there were other buses that come in, and evidently they were swapping passengers and taking this one, taking this one, taking this one. But when we got up in that churchyard, I turned and I looked out the window, and there stood my dad. And I knew then. And he, he had come looking for me. I come down off the bus and I went running to him. I'm just a little bitty guy. And I jumped up in his arms and grabbed him around the neck. I said, Dad, I got on the wrong bus. He said, you did, didn't you? I said, yes, sir, I got on the wrong bus. He said, yeah, but I found you. I found you now. I'll take you home. There's a lot of buses in religion today. Oh, my goodness. And they all may be pointed toward where you think they're going. But I promise you, every bus, I don't care what anybody says, all roads may lead to Rome, but all roads don't lead to hell. Amen. 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 Your only hope it's going to be Jesus Christ. Right. Not your feelings. Not the way things may look. You may see some buses that look a whole lot better than the old rattle traps. But I encourage you, do not swap on something that is working for something that may look better to you. Your only hope in Jesus Christ. And if God ever regenerates you, if He ever quickens you by His great and mighty power, Amen. Jesus is going to look mighty good. Amen. 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 You won't ever see anything so wonderful. Amen. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It'd be good to be saved. Yes, sir.